In this video, I'm introducing the newest demo bike that has landed in my bike fleet, the Ibis Mojo. Really stoked to try this bike. So if you're not very familiar with Ibis, the Mojo series of bikes is their 27.5 inch wheel bike. So it's been a while since I've been on 27.5. In fact, the, I think the last one that was in my fleet was the Niner Rip 9 27.5 demo that I had. I ended up getting the 29er version of that bike as my own bike, but the demo I really had a blast on and I did kind of a comparison with 27.5 and 29. But what I like about 27.5 inch wheels, and I'm really glad that 27.5 inch wheels are still around because every time I get on them, I'm reminded of how fun they are to ride. Now I have not gotten any ride time on this bike. This is my first look video. And in my first look video, I'm really just showing the bike that I'll be reviewing over the next couple months. But back to what I was saying, what I like about these kind of bikes is they're built for fun. This is not a bike that you're gonna win a cross country race on most likely. It's also probably not a bike that you're gonna win an enduro race on. Ibis classifies this as all mountain. It's got 140 mil travel in the front, 130 in the rear. And I would honestly classify this as a trail bike, but all mountain kind of covers a pretty wide range of bikes. Again, all mountain to me is not cross country. It's not enduro race. It's just a bike to get out and cover a wide variety of terrain and do it with a lot of fun. So this is the regular Ibis Mojo. The Mojo HD is their longer travel bike. And I think that one's like 170 in the front. I'll put it on the screen and 160 in the back if I recall correctly. So that one's built for more gravity oriented type riding on 27.5 inch wheels. This is just kind of like, it, you know, like I said, it's trail, all mountain, however you want to classify it but it's just for getting out and having fun. So I'm gonna show this bike up close. Now this bike is not one, all the components are not like one that fits into one of the ones they offer on their website. So it's got a mix of SLX components and it's got a Fox fork. So on their website, the SLX bikes have a RockShox fork. I think it's a Pike and it has alloy wheels. This bike has a Fox fork and it has carbon wheels. And I'm really excited about trying these because Ibis makes some really good wheels and they're really wide. So this is their S35 carbon wheel. Again, I'll show it up close in a minute, but it's, it's wide, it's 35 mil wide and it's got some pretty beefy tires on it. But um, yeah, like I said, I, I'm, I'm stoked about trying this bike. I'm gonna have it in my possession for a couple months. Got a trip to the mountains planned coming up in a few days. Uh, here in Florida, it's been just a soggy sweat fest all summer. So I've got to get out of here and get some mountain riding time, which I'll be doing coming up in a few days and probably doing my initial review. I'll do kind of a ride along review. But with that, let's go ahead and, and I'll just show you the bike and the components that come on this one. So I've owned and demoed many bikes with DW Link, really like it. The past ones that I've tried are not quite as plush as Niner's CVA or Giant's Maestro, but this is a newer one, so I'll report back on that. But DW Link, like those other two suspension designs that I just named, have a really solid pedaling platform and are plenty plush on the descents. This particular frame is a medium. I'm 5'8", and according to Ibis's website, that's a good size for me. I could be on the large, like I'm just tall enough to ride the large. When I was riding this bike around the driveway, it honestly felt a tad small, but that could be because I'm coming off 29 inch wheels for so long that 27.5 just feels a bit small. Yeah, the size, it, it should be good, but that's one of the things that I'll talk about when I do my future reviews. The frame does fit a water bottle cage, so that is nice. I'll probably add one for my rides. Underneath, you've got a replaceable down tube protector, which is always welcome on carbon frames. One thing that I really like about 27.5 inch wheel bikes is they have shorter chain stays. I mean, you can because the wheels are not as big. And some people like long chain stays for stability. I prefer shorter chain stays. This one has 425 millimeter chain stays. And by the way, other geometry numbers, this bike has a 76.6 degree seat tube angle. So pretty standard today on trail bikes. Steeper than what you used to see on trail bikes that have like 74 degree seat tube angles, but this one puts you in a better climbing position. And then when you're going downhill, you're generally out of the saddle. This bike has a, I think it's a 65.4 degree head angle. Again, pretty modern trail bike numbers, ones that I've really come to become accustomed to lately. 
on some of my personal bikes. Take a quick look at the cable routing. Again, when I do these reviews, I'm gonna focus more on the bike itself, so the frame, since this is not a component spec that's generally available in the combination that I'm showing. So you've got the cables that go in at the front, down here at the back, you've got your rear shifter cable coming out, going back into the chain stay. So really clean cable routing. And the brake, by the way, is internally routed. So it's gonna come out at the bottom of the down tube there, go back into the left chain stay, and then come out. You know, so it's only in there for a little bit, but it keeps it nice and clean. So as I mentioned, this bike has SLX components. So the drivetrain and also the brakes are Shimano SLX. You know, SLX is just super solid. Uh, definitely a, a component group that I would put on my personal bike. So as I mentioned, this has a Fox fork. One thing I like about this Fox fork, and you know, I know it's not the one that comes on uh, the production bikes right now is it's got high speed rebound control and also low speed rebound control. If you're curious about suspension setup, I'm running 20% sag on the fork, which is 28 millimeters. And on the rear shock, I'm running 25% sag, which is 12 millimeters, which is what IBIS recommends in their suspension setup guide. I like to follow that for suspension designs like DW Link because dialing in proper sag is important for this suspension design to work properly. The Fox rear shock, by the way, is what IBIS is showing on their standard production bikes right now. It's the Fox DPS Evol, which is extra volume. I like extra volume shock because they have a nice linear feel. This one has a few levels of compression damping. So the blue knob all the way over to the drivetrain side or the right side is going to be the firmest. The middle setting is going to be kind of between firm and soft. And then of course, all the way over to the left is soft. So I'll probably run it full soft for descents and I'll probably put it in the middle for climbing and also for general trail riding. Pretty standard for trail bikes today, 180 mil rotor both in the front and also on the rear. So I mentioned the carbon wheels. So these are Ibis's own S35 carbon wheels with a 35 millimeter inner width, really wide. Combine that with 2.6 inch tires. So by the way, the front tire is a Schwalbe Hans Dampf and the rear tire is a Schwalbe Knobby Nick. So these are 2.6s, almost getting up into the plus size tire range. However, I actually like that for 27.5. If it were 29, these would be too big. They would just be too heavy. But I like the fact that Ibis put these on this bike because it's gonna give me more cornering grip, which I'm really used to for 29 inch wheels. So, you know, wider tires for good grip, and then smaller diameter wheel is gonna make the bike feel a little bit more agile, a little bit more playful than my 29ers. Rounding out the first look of this bike, it's got an 800 millimeter wide bar. However, there are bar extensions on these bars. I had to take the grip off to do something when I was putting this bike together. And you've got some bar extensions, which it looked like it extended the bars about 20 millimeters. I run 800s on my personal trail bike and also my Enduro bike. So I'm gonna keep it like that because I'm used to it. The stem, this looks to be about a 35 to 40 mil travel stem, pretty common today for all mountain and trail bikes. With Ibis's own top cap to remind you to ride more and work less. If you figure out how to do that, please let me know in the comments below. I'd love to know how. Saddle on this bike is a WTB Coda. I actually never tried this saddle before. I use the WTB Silverado on a few of my bikes. Really like those saddles. So uh, curious to see what this one's like. And it's got a bike yoke dropper post. First time I've ever used one of these, but just riding the thing around the parking lot or driveway, I should say, uh, it's just buttery smooth. Like that is a super smooth dropper post. I wanna give you a weight for this bike because people always ask. So this carbon mojo with carbon wheels and the SLX components comes in at 28.84 pounds. Putting that into kilograms, it's just over 13 kilograms. I wanna throw in this scene here because I thought about something when I was editing the video, and that is the fact that even though I'm talking about the specs being different on the demo model that I have versus what's on the website, a lot of this is due to the COVID supply constraints that almost every bike manufacturer across the planet is experiencing right now. And Ibis even mentions this on their website when you're looking at the different builds. So I would definitely check out their website before heading to your local Ibis dealer because specs are changing like weekly right now. Bike manufacturers are just grabbing whatever components they can get their hands on to get bikes out the door. So that's why you're gonna see probably over the next year, 
specs varying uh, amongst different bike models than what they normally would put out. So that is a look at my newest test bike, the Ibis Mojo Carbon 27.5 inch wheel, all mountain bike with 140 mil travel in the front and 130 in the back. Again, Ibis classifies this as an all mountain play bike, which piques my attention because I'm really stoked to ride this. So like I said, the first review that I do on this bike is probably going to be a ride along review as I take it up in the mountains and I'll give you my first impression as I take this bike up a big climb and then down a big downhill. So stay tuned to the channel for that and for follow-up reviews on this bike. Thanks for watching.